Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here we go again today. Another video, the third one in Electrons and Atoms. I can't wait. Bam! So, production of light from an atom. We're going to be uh, using the Bohr model of the atom here. We're going to be talking about the Bohr model in another video, but this is using the Bohr model. Okay, so let's build our atom first and then we can find out how light is produced from an atom. Remember that first slide here where we saw um, the firework display. So how is light produced? We're going to figure out how that is here right now. Okay, so the nucleus is in the center of the atom. Hopefully that makes sense. That's where the neutrons and protons are. Okay, and around the nucleus is an orbital. Okay, and... So this orbital is in n equals 1, and that is called the ground state. Just kind of like the ground floor of a building that's the low level, the ground floor at the bottom. No basements here. Okay? Then the next level is n equals 2. Okay? And that is further away from the nucleus. The next level, that's like the second floor. Then the next level is n equals 3. That's like the third floor. Then the fourth and the fifth floor. I want you to notice something about these floors here and the n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5. As you go farther from the nucleus, the numbers increase in whole numbers. Also, I want you to notice something else. As the numbers increase, the n increases, then the distance between the n's decreases the farther, the, the distance between them decreases the farther you go out. Hopefully you can see that. So, for example, the distance between n equals 1 and n equals 2 is very big. The distance between n equals 5 and n equals 4 is very short. Okay, so that's very important in our Bohr model of the atom. Okay, so now... Right here, we're going to absorb energy, okay? So this atom is going to absorb energy somehow. So, I don't know, you plug it into a light socket, you light it on fire, you make it explode. So somehow you're going to absorb energy into the atom. When you absorb energy into the atom, then the electron is going to do something. That electron can move in a variety of different places. So see that one electron that this has, and this would be like hydrogen since there's only one electron, that one electron can move in a variety of different places depending on how much energy it absorbed. So here are the different possibilities. All of these red electron dots here are in n equals greater than 1. So they are all called excited electrons because they're above the ground state. Okay, so they're all greater than n equals 1. Not all of these are just like uh, uh, all at once here, right? Uh, can only absorb a certain amount of energy, then it can go to any one of these distances. Now, I want you to notice something here, that there are no electrons in between orbitals. So, it's one of the uh, rules for the Bohr model, is that you cannot have electrons in between the orbitals. They can only go on the orbitals themselves. So, just like I'm wearing my solar system here, we have the planets are orbiting the sun, and these electrons are orbiting the nucleus, just like the planets are orbiting the sun in these nice, beautiful circles. Okay? That's why I'm wearing this today. All right, so now that we have that um, electron that has absorbed energy and it has moved to a higher level, higher than n equals 1, that's n equals 2, 3, 4, or 5 in this case, okay, now we're going to find out what happens as light is produced. So I want you to look at the n equals 5 electron and look at that black line that just dropped down from n equals 5 to n equals 4. So if the electron that's excited, it will be excited. And those excited electrons are unstable. So what they will do is they will, quote, fall to a lower energy level. And that n equals 5 electron has a variety of different options. It can fall from n equals 5 to n equals 4, n equals 5 to n equals 3, n equals 5 to n equals 2, n equals 5 to n equals 1. Those are all the possibilities. Remember, they cannot place the electron in between orbitals. So I've just moved this electron from n equals 5 to n equals 4. When that electron falls, 
moves to a lower energy level, it will emit light, okay? That light is equal to the distance of fall, okay? So let's say that our electron was at n equals four, okay? And it falls down to a lower energy level of n equals three. It could have gone to n equals two or one, but I'm just showing here going from four to three. Okay, now it's going from four to three. It's also going to emit light. Now the light, um, that the wavelength of light is going to be different from n equals five to four and also from the four to the three. Notice that the distance is different. That distance is very important because that is associated with a particular energy and a particular frequency and therefore a particular wavelength. So you would have two different types of wavelengths of light even though the n change, the change in n, is equal to 1 in both of these cases. Okay, now I'm going to take that n equals 3 electron and drop that down into n equals 2. Okay, and now that will, as it drops, as it falls, it will emit light. Okay, I'm going to take that n equals 2 and drop it down to n equals 1, and then that will also emit light. Each of these is an n of change of n of 1, but each of these have a different distance of fall and therefore different wavelengths of light and frequencies. Now I'm going to take that n equals 4 electron and drop it down into n equals 2. Okay, now this is just one of the other possibilities that could happen. Okay, and that will also emit a different wavelength of light. Notice that there's no change in n that is the same anywhere, okay? All right, so the distance of fall is critical to understanding this concept here. And the concept is high energy, high frequency, low wavelength. So see that high E is for high energy. High, that's the Greek letter nu, which looks like a V, but it's scripted. That's high frequency. And low, that's a lambda, Greek letter lambda, and that low um, wavelength, okay? So high energy, the distance of fall, the greatest distance of fall in any one of these examples that I've given here, the greatest distance of fall is from n equals two to n equals one. So because that is such a large distance of fall, that would be the highest frequency, the highest energy, and the shortest wavelength, okay? Conversely to that, the n equals 5 to 4 will be low energy, low frequency, and long, uh, 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 not a low wavelength, but a high wavelength, if you will. Does that make sense? Long wavelength. Okay. So this concept here is reinstated in this concept of a ladder. So I want you to take a look at this ladder and the rungs to the ladder, okay, we have the rails to the ladder, they go up and down, that's what you hold on to when you climb a ladder, but the rungs are the parts that you step on, okay? The rungs to the ladder are not equal distant, okay? So this is a very special ladder. The ladder rungs are far apart initially, and as you get to the top, uh, the rungs of the ladder are compressed, and the distance is very short. So therefore, the rungs to the ladder in between n equals 1 and 2 is a great distance. And the rungs to the ladder between n equals, let's say, 6 and 7 is very short. Hopefully that makes sense to you. This is really critical. I want you to review this video again. Okay? I am the crazy hat chemist. And uh, in memory of Mr. Dr. Seuss and all of his wonderful books, okay, give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time for more chemistry. Bye now.